Okay, what is half life? Half life is defined as the time taken for a radioactive isotope to reduce to half of its size. So it is symbolized C half. Half life. So how do we derive the formula for half life? The equation for half life is given as 0 0.693 over decay constant lambda. Where the symbol here stands for decay constant. So how do we derive the formula for half life? Okay. To derive order for half life, first of all, we have to recall the radioactive law. The law, of, the law of radioactivity states that law of radioactivity states that the activity of a radioisotope is directly proportional or dependent on the number of particles present. So you ask, what is the meaning of activity? Activity is defined as the number of disintegration that occurs in a particular quantity of a radioactive material. Or you could say it is the rate of disintegration of a radioactive substance. So activity is defined using this equation as change in the number of particles present with respect to time. Of course, when a reductive substance undergoes this integration, that change is a negative change because it is expected that the final quantity of the material left will be less will be lesser in number. So from here, if we remove the proportional sign, we are going to introduce a constant, and that constant is given as lambda or decay constant. So, if A, okay, let me call this equation 1, and this equation 2, and this equation 3. So, if A is given as negative change of N over change in T, therefore I can replace the value of A using equation 2. Therefore, I'll have that negative change in N over change in T will be equal to lambda N. So from here, I'm having a derivative. So I could still say, I can still move this negative sign to the other side. It doesn't change anything. Mathematically, then I'll have negative change in lambda n. So from here, how do we get a normal function from a derivative function? What we do is that we integrate, we integrate the both sides. So by integrating, I could simply say I could collect, I could, I could collect all the n together in this form. I have the t goes up and n comes down. Then I'll have the n over n and then t goes to the t goes to that side i have negative lambda dt okay haven't gotten that in order for us to get a normal function from a derivative function we have to integrate and by integrating we introduce an integral sign which gives us the n over n. And remember, this is a definite integral. You know, we have indefinite and definite integral. A definite integral has limits at means final and initial values. So, at initial number of particles or atoms present, and the final we take is at n equal to negative lambda. And of course, you know, we don't allow negative signs or constant after integral sign. So we are left with dt 
and also similarly, we also take the definite integral of this, meaning that we we look at time when the time was zero and then at the final time. Okay, I haven't done this. Now let's integrate. Of course, I can also rearrange this to like this. Then I have n, n naught, 1 over n, the n is equals to negative lambda t, 0, the t. So I'm free to integrate now. Now, as we all know from the knowledge of mass, the integral of 1 over any variable in the presence of the chain of that variable gives you the lean of that variable that is in n. I mean natural log linting of that variable. For example, if I see it, what's the integral of 1 over x? The x. You get lean x. If is an if if it is a, if it is an indefinite integral, you add plus c, but in this case we have our limits here and here. So we don't need to include C. Okay, I haven't done this. I can also apply this knowledge to this. So our answer will have lean n. But because we are giving the limits, so I'm not going to throw the limits away. I have my n and my n naught here. Equal to negative lambda. Of course, the derivative of change in t gives you t. And similarly, I have my limit values here. So what do I do with the limits of the initial and final values? Of course, I'll subtract the initial from the final, and then I'll have lean. Just to replace this, you have replace this n with the final n minus still the same, but you replace the n with the initial number of particles equal to negative lambda. Similarly, the same thing you do for this, you have bracket t minus 0. So what is left? You apply the law of log t. If you have log a, whatever base, this, let's say base 10 minus log b base 10, is similarly written as log a over b in base 10. So I can apply that knowledge here. So I'll have this as lean n over n naught equal to negative lambda. Of course, first of all, subtract zero, it still gives you the same t. So this is my relative formula. I can write it this way. Or I can also say, of course, you know, lean natural log is equivalent to log reading of exponential. So I can also replace this with this, or I can leave it this way. But if I replace, I'll have log log e n over n naught is equals to minus lambda t. And if we do this, I'll we'll also get this answer as if you take this um, one of the laws of log reading, you move the base towards the right hand side, you'll be left with n over n naught is equals to exponential raised to power negative lambda of t. So this is my reductive formula, formula for reductivity. You can use it to solve many problems. But the question here we've been asked is how to derive the equation for half-life. So how do I do this? Half-life. Okay, remember I said half-life is a time taken for a given quantity of a radioisotope to reduce to half of its original size. It therefore means that at half life, at t half, it means that the final number of particles remaining or left will be equal to the initial all over 2. So it simply means whenever we find n, we can replace n naught over 2. So therefore, half, if you replace, replacing or substituting n or substituting n naught over 2 for n. But before replacing, I could simply bring this over here. I'll have that n is equal to make it easier. I'll have that n naught exponential 
I must learn that T, and then I can easily replace. Now, when I replace this value, I'll have that N naught over 2 will be equal to N naught exponential minus lambda t. And when I have this, I'll have that. You can see when you have similar variables on both sides, they can equally cancel. So I'm left with 1 over 2 is equal to exponential minus lambda t. Okay, so I'm going to the answer. No, but just left with one t. So now do you get your final answer now? When you have an exponential value here, one exponential here, how do I remove this quantity here? I'll simply introduce a natural logarithm in both sides. So introducing natural logarithm in both sides, you have that lean 1 over 2 equal to lean exponential negative lambda t. Of 1 over 2 equal to lean is also the same thing as log e. So logarithm of the same base cancels. So you are left with 1 over 2 is equal to negative lambda half life. So similarly, I can put this negative sign over here. And if I do that, I'll have negative lean 1 over 2 is equal to lambda t half. And of course, if I want to remove this negative sign, this will be inverted. I'll have lean 2 over 1 or just 2, which is equal to lambda t half. So finally, I can get my half life by making t half the subject of formula. I'll therefore have that t half will be equal to lean 2 over lambda. And of course, if you type lean 2 in your calculator, you discover that lean 2 is equal to 0 0.693 over lambda. So guys, this is how to derive the equation for half-life. Hello guys, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click on the red notification button to get more of my videos. Thank you.